Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, and today we're discussing catastrophe theory. Now, there's a reason we're going to do this, and so stick with me till the end, because I think it'll be worth your while. But we're going to discuss this mathematical um, construct without any symbols, so don't worry about that. This is all going to be uh, conceptual. Now, catastrophe theory basically says that maybe there are 10,000 tiny little steps to the edge of a cliff. Now, 9,999 of those, have there's no change from one step to the other. In other words, you can't tell that you're right to the edge of the cliff. And then you get to the edge of the cliff, and that last little tiny step, poop, off you go. Now, you find yourself at the bottom of this cliff thinking, well, what happened? You know, all I did was take one more little step. You know, I did that 9,999 times before, and nothing happened. Why did this happen? So you think, the first thing is, well, maybe if I just take half a step backwards, I'll be okay. And catastrophe theory not only says that those steps preceding the event are pretty much imperceptible, in other words, you can't tell that you've even moved toward the cliff, but you, it also describes how you have to take the long way around to get back to where you started, if you can get back there at all. So, let's put this into some... Um, real life examples. So let's say that you've got this car you've had for a while, maybe five years or something, and the car's starting to bug you. And so little by little this car bugs you a little bit more each day until one day you say, you know what, I can't stand it anymore, and you go get a different car. Now when you get a different car, you don't buy, let's go buy a Lugma today, a tire tomorrow, um, some fuel inject injector components the next day. You don't do that. You know, you take these small little steps until you get to the event, and then you go buy a car. Uh, getting married is the same type of idea. You know, you don't uh, get married a little bit each day. You know, you start off with maybe some observations about relationships with your child. Then you hit puberty, your hormones start to kick in little by little, and it's almost imperceptible, except everybody around you, of course. And then, you know, through the teen years or whatever, you uh, develop this... this um, this desire to be with this significant other, and then one day, bam, there's marriage. And of course, if you, some people have discovered that that once you're married, you can't just take a half a step back and get unmarried. It doesn't work like that. So, those are some good examples. Now, why do I even bring this up in the first place? Well, it's because in my clinic, I can't tell you how many times people have told me all I did was bend down and pick up this little piece of paper and my back went out. Now obviously that can't happen that way. It has to be the catastrophe theory type of idea where there were 10,000, 100,000, whatever tiny little events up to that, that moment and all of a sudden that, that disc blows out, you bend over, pick up the piece of paper and now you're in a different state that you've ever been in before and of course the idea is people come into the clinic and they say, you know, this happened to me, so obviously if you just put this back, I'll be like I was before this happened. And now you understand with uh, this whole mathematical idea of catastrophe theory that this is going to be a long way back. And it's just the way it is. So, some other examples. Maybe you've been eating trans fats your whole life. You know, check that Snickers label and uh, you'll see them there, and so maybe you've been eating those since you were two years old, and then you have 41 years old, and you have a heart attack, and you go, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Well, it was, uh, again, 100,000 steps that where you had no, no notice whatsoever that you were approaching the cliff. Or maybe you're gluten sensitive, like I suspect half the population is, and so you eat gluten every day, two, three times a day, and then one day you wake up, you can't get out of bed because you know you had some kind of rheumatoid arthritis attack. And you had no idea this was even coming on. But there you are. Now how do you think you're going to get back to the top of that cliff? You know, it's going to be a long road. Um, maybe, maybe you love your ice cream. You know, you eat it every day. And little by little you put on weight, but not so much. You're not worried about it. You're only 10 or 15 pounds of weight. And you look great according to everybody around you. And then one day you notice that this cut on your toe won't heal. And so welcome to the world of diabetes. How do you think you got there? Was it just something you did yesterday? Or was it something or a hundred thousand steps before that? So the point is that I want you to pause a little bit, take a little inventory, 
Think of those, those tiny little steps you're taking day after day after day after day. And where are those steps going to lead you? Steps going to lead you. And we're smart enough to be able to figure that out. So that's the whole point of catastrophe theory. So it's 100,000 steps or 10,000 whatever. Off what, That last one sends you off the cliff. But you can't just back up and get to where you went, to where you left off. You're going to have to take the long way around. And so that's pretty much true of the people we see every day in our clinic and in our um, internet practice that uh, people are finding themselves in a crisis and we can help them but it's say it's a long road but we just want to understand how you got there and maybe you can prevent it falling off the next cliff so anyway i'm dr dan thanks for listening hope that was helpful